everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Danny Vimo, and over there we got Christopher Graves. Hey guys, welcome back. Welcome back. Uh, I would like you to uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, also, go over to Facebook and uh, like our sponsor, Hockey Locker, 2002 West Howard Avenue, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. You can call them at 414-800-7585 or visit their website at hockeylockermilwaukee.com. Click. <laughs> All righty. On camera for 30 seconds and already my TV was distracting me. All righty. Hockey Locker will outfit you with everything hockey related uh, player gear, fan gear, referee gear. No icing chart, but it is what it is. I kind of just want to talk about what happened. Oh, what? Uh, the game. So, yeah. Stats. Oh. Oh, I crap. All right. Eh, you work. All right, uh, shots on goal, 39-32 for the Predators. Uh, Face-off percentage, uh, 58% for the Red Wings. Predators, 42. Uh, the Predators were 1 for 3 on the power play. Detroit was 0 for 3. Penalty minutes were 8 apiece. Detroit out-hit them 15-13. Uh, Predators had 13 block shots. Detroit had 9. Uh, Detroit had nine giveaways. Predators had two. Um, yeah. All right. So scoring in the first <laughs> was Luke Glenn Denning, a longtime Grand Rapids Griffin. Uh, his scoring his second at the uh, 455 mark of the first. A lot of hard work by him. Um, it was a lot of hard work and a little bit of luck. Uh, the assist goes to Zadina, his fourth, and Helm, his first. Uh, then scoring on the power play was Mikel Granlin at the 14-15 mark of the first with an assist by Yossi, his ninth, and Tolvanen with a point in his second straight game. Yeah, that was his first assist. All right, scoring in the second, Sam Gagne. Gagne with his first of the year. Um, first goal in 18 games uh, yeah. with an assist by Bobby Ryan, his fifth, with a, and that was at the 838 mark of the second. In the third, Eric Halla scored his first as a, as a Fred um, with an assist from Ellis, his third, and Coonan, his third. Or Alice is seventh and Coonan is third. Sorry. Uh, that was at the 255 mark of the third. Then scoring at the 958 mark was Sam Gagne again with his second with an assist by Ryan, Bobby Ryan, his sixth, and Danny DeKaiser, his first. Um, that was at the 958 mark. Uh, Adam Ernie scored his second of the year with an assist assist by Helm, his second, and Glenn Denning, his fourth, at the 16-22 mark. Um, Pekka, uh, you're at fault for that one. <coughs> um, then uh, scoring an empty net goal and a hat trick was Sam Gagne scoring his third unassisted at the 16-56 mark. Hey, you want to elaborate on why Peck was at fault for that goal that you said he was? All right, so Pekka played the puck out far into the center of the crease, went and blocked the puck up. There's a thing in this world called gravity that brings it back down. Going in a trajectory behind you gives you a 75% chance of it going into your net. And a lot more net than there is space behind it as far as where he was. Um, so the probability for scoring was very high there and left the rebound out. And um, I kind of blame the defense. That was everybody on the ice at that point. That was their fault. All right. So on that, uh, there were two goals uh, that were not Pekka's fault. One was Luke Glenn Denning. Benning should have been in, in Granlin's place. Granlin was is not a defenseman, is not a defensive forward. Um, he's more of an offensive forward. 
Yeah, um, Benning just looked at the puck as it went in. He made no attempt to block it. Of he, he just chased, looked at it. He chased the defense, the player with the puck. The guy dumped it off and left Pekka on an island, and Granlin had to go cover for him. And Granlin's not going to put himself out there to get injured at this point in the season, just that early in the game. Yeah. Um. With that being said. Uh, goaltenders tonight were Pecorine. He stopped 27 of 31 with a .871 save percentage. Ouch. Uh, in net for Detroit was Jonathan Bernier, stopping 37 of 39 with a .949 save percentage. Referee He's, was Fran- Francois. I, he, Bernier seems to play good against the uh, Predators. He did that when he was with the Kings, too, so nothing new there. Yeah. Um, Francois Laurent and Ian Walsh were your referees. Linesmen were Kyle Flemington and Corey Nagy. Head coach for Nashville is John Hines. Head coach for Detroit is Jeff Blashill. Both of them are on the hot seat, according to news reports. Scratches for Nashville were uh, Yakov Trenin and Jared Tenardi. Scratch for Detroit was Troy Steckler. All right, crap list. COVID, you're number Benning. one. I'd say Benning for that idiotic move. All right, Benning, Bar- Barvesky, Grandland, minus three, even with the goal. Yeah. Uh, Arvidsson, minus two, and Forsberg, minus two. Forsberg had three shots on net. Yarn Park has a, okay. I... Looking, looking, looking. Um, he said Arvidsson, he had a minus two. Yes. Uh, now, as we seeing if you missed anybody. Nope. Uh, I got Forsberg, Arvidsson, Gradlin, Benny, and Borvesky. Um, I will say this off this game. All right. Look, if you don't come ready to play, after shutting out a team, they're going to wipe the floor with you. If you play them back to back and you shut them out the last game, they're going to come hungry. Doesn't matter if it, if it's the stars or the guys on the fourth line. They want to put the puck in the net. And if you're not ready to play defense and play strong defense like they had the last two to three games, because the last game before this that they lost wasn't, like, horrible. It was just kind of like a last-minute thing that happened. Um, You, you kind of leave yourself in a position. Now, I've seen enough from this to know that at this point in the season, we're kind of averaging around win one, lo- win two, lose five, win five, lose eight. It's like, take, oh, oh, have we lost eight in a row this year? No, but I'm just saying, you know, it just seems like you, you, you get going and you start getting those, the, the, you know, you're, you're thinking about pulling the training wheels off there a little bit, and, and they fall off and skin their knee. Yeah, pretty much. It's just one of those uh, weird situations that we're in this year with Nashville. Now, I will say this. I, once, you, once you get to uh, rip the fact that they ganked the goalie. Okay. As far as this is concerned, according to Detroit's commentary, because that's who covered tonight, all right, Pekka was never waved to the net. That does not mean that Hines didn't call him to the net. It doesn't mean somebody on the bench, you know, gave a slight little. Some type of a hand signal. Yeah, you're out. You know, to come to the bench. (laughs) That doesn't mean that. So when they say he wasn't called to the bench, that doesn't mean that they didn't miss something subtle. That Pekka was supposed to look for. That just means he wasn't he wasn't noticeably called to the bench. Yeah, so it's like it's one of those situations where. I'm not going to put it on Hines and the assistant coaches yet. But, man, that game was just hard to watch. 
and, 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 and they were battling the whole game. That That is one they, thing. They, they had a lot of scoring opportunities, but it just wasn't going in because Bernier just plays good against them. And I hate to sound like the rest of the media, but that's been the story of the season for the Predators. Do you get all the chances and they just don't go in? Uh-huh. Hey, uh, uh, we are part of the media, so feel free. I know, but I'm just saying I hate sounding like them sometimes, like the rest of them, because, you know, I, we're not traditionalists. We do. Yeah, but hey, sometimes it, it just it is what it is. Fit. <clears throat> exactly. Now, I will say this. If if it continues, we're one point out of last. Yeah, I was about to say, you might want to bring up that stat. We're like nowhere near playoff contention yet. However, there's a lot of games to be played left. But not a lot of time to crawl out of it. You're oh, playing no. games two, three. Like, you're playing like what? Four, four games a week, a week, it seems. I'd say about four a week, it seems. Like. And here's the thing. These guys could have been gassed. I, we don't know that. We they could have there could have been some guys on the on the ice tonight that were tired. It's, you know, you know, average hockey player burns through about forty five pounds worth of calories in a single game. So, if they are gassed and they're not, you know, because of COVID, there's not many options for them to you know, carb load and 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 boost that traditional style of of the way that they're used to doing it. Like I remember when I was playing, it was always pasta, pasta before a game, pasta, you know, yeah. carbs, carbs, carbs. So, you know. Not and, to mention, they're not typically used to having to play four games a week. Typically, it's about three. At most. Yeah. Like, it'll be, what, one and two off. Let's say, let's say they play on a Sunday, then they play like a Wednesday, Friday, Saturday type situation yeah and or, or or they'd play like sunday wednesday friday you know they usually play about three games a week typically but now with covid it's like four a week yeah and and, and here's the thing i there's no all-star break so, oh, so you getting... can't count on that five day off which is always helpful um, unless and... you're a podcaster then that's just a pain in the butt because you have no content for a week um then you have also you have no like the scheduled three or four days off nashville however does have a scheduled three days off after their homestand with columbus <clears throat> but if you think about it we've had unnecessary days off at the beginning of the year of all the game cancellations so in theory they're getting extra rest and they're still worn out but that's a thing that could, uh, I mean, if you really look at it, you're going to play extra games just to make up for the ones you missed. Yeah, I know. But if you're worn out at the beginning of the year, how are you going to be able to regroup if you have to make up those games at the end of the year and you don't have the additional days off that you had at the beginning? That comes of the year? down to the head coach and the conditioning coach. Well, look at us. We might have to rip their conditioning coach. And hey, we rip every other coach they have. Well, their conditioning coach seems to be doing a good job because they're, they're, they're not not having issues uh, as far as, like, guys getting suffering from dehydration or severe weight loss or getting That we're hurt. aware of. That we're aware of. Yeah. Um, I mean, the injury, least... the injury bug currently is – it's a mixed bag because we have guys on the injured list, uh, or we've had them, and they're starting to come back. But it's, yeah, yeah, it's one of those situations. I I just think at this point for the Predators that you know chalk this one up, done. On to Columbus. That prep starts nine a.m. tomorrow morning at practice. Yeah, is that game in Columbus? Because starting like the 2nd of March, uh, Columbus is going to be allowing fans. Bridgestone. Okay. Yeah, because uh, Columbus, they're going to be letting fans in the building, I believe, March 2nd. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I I just wanted to add in some of those. I also wanted to add in the talks uh, that we've heard from the rumor mill have kind of died down a little bit with the two game winning streak, but they should ramp up by midnight. Midnight. By the time this video is uploaded, <laughs> midnight. I'll say midnight. Yeah. Um. Here's the thing. It, there's a lot of good prospects out there. We don't need a lot of draft picks. This is not a particular year where you want to have two or three. Well, you might want to have two, but maybe not three or, you know, multiple early picks in the draft because you're not going to be able to scout as much as you can, as we would normally. Wow. Now you're sounding like me. Um, now, wasn't I wasn't I just preaching that same line like all year? Now, however, on the flip side of that, most of the guys that were 17 years old last year are were playing this year. Uh, were playing that are eligible for the draft were playing last year. So the scouting report that you had on them last year, you're gonna have to go off of that. Yeah, but the new crop that we add this year, those are the guys that you're going to basically be flipping a coin and hoping you get lucky. Because you don't have that you don't have that scouting regimen that you typically have. You don't got the video footage because all these junior leagues and stuff are not playing. Now, a lot of a lot if of you're drafting KHL guys, then you got plenty of video footage you can get access to. But as far as the juniors and college, there's really not a lot of video availability. What we're talking scouting? Can I put my two cents in? I've been quiet for a good chunk of the show. Hey, go ahead, throw your two cents. I that, just but... did. You just well, looked at me like mad. I'm like, whoa, chill, dude, chill. I'm, I'm actually trying to look up uh, the uh, scouting report recently just dropped by um, uh, uh, Pierre Lebron. I'll start looking up the scouting reports in about a month. It's still early into the year, man. Um, the other other thing we have to look at, okay, so most likely Saros will be starting next game, Okay. I would think because then a pack of play the last three. Yeah. Um, I think that at this point, if Saros doesn't rebound soon, door. Not not that I want that. And not that it's a punishment, but the team just don't respond when he's in net. They always let him hanging. They've been doing it for like three years now. They were doing it when Laviolette was coach. I'm right, ain't I, Dan? Yeah. All right. So the one, the one thing obvious this year, Aturati, he's going number one. That's Greg Button, NHL Central Scouting, McKean's Hockey Top Thirty Five or Top Top Thirty Two, FC Hockey Top Top Thirty Two. Hey, 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 quit giving people our secrets, fool. No, I'm just saying I'm giving the people who are doing the scouting reports. You can see these uh, on it on TSN, NHL.com. Yeah. yeah, but if we tell them where to go, they're not going to watch us to get the info, fool. Ah, uh, are you trying to sabotage the show? No, just giving yeah. info. Certain pieces of info we keep to ourselves. Knowledge is key. Well, you should. Um, The one thing I will say that looking at the future of hockey, there's going to be some changes. Um, we were told, or if you watched the game tonight, you saw that there's talks about changing the lottery system. Um, that's something we've been seeing a lot of. First off, I'm going to say this. Edmonton? You're the reason. You're the reason. <laughs> All that intentional tanking of yours. And it didn't get you anywhere. Five, you draft all four. Four out of six. Four out of the last six years, Edmonton's had the top pick. Okay. 
So, or however they said that. That was a stat that I heard during the game. So I'm not just pulling facts out of my butt. Ugh. All right. So if it is four out of the last six, you draft all forwards, you get no goalie help, and you're sitting here wondering why you can't do Out anything. of the second round? Yeah. Because they'll at least get to the second round, and then that's when they usually run out of steam. I mean, you know, McDavid and Dryslide are good, but you need additional people. You know, it's just one of those situations where you feel like, how do you go? How do you go about this going forward over the next couple years? If you're you're not gonna figure it out now. Currently, just off of a fresh update, number one pick projected by me, Luke Hughes, defenseman. Number two pick, Atua Rabi. Number three pick, Ati Atua. Oh, I'm sorry, Ato Iguchi. Is he Japanese by chance? Yes, yes, he is. Ooh, I want a Japanese player. How, how many Japanese players have played in the NHL? Yeah, yeah exactly. I'd ha- I would have no issue with a Japanese player on the Predators. He's currently 17 years old, five foot, woof, three. Yeah, he he's a Rocco Grimaldi type, but I think Grimaldi got him by a foot. <laughs> well, now, Tenardi would make him look tiny. Well, ain't Grimaldi like six one, or is he six even? Uh, Grimaldi is five nine. Really? Oof. Yeah. Hey, I, oh man. So he's about the same, a couple inches taller than that uh, Japanese kid. All right, so he played in the World Juniors under 20, had five games played, two goals, three assists. I think that when you look at it, you know, um, I've seen some scouting videos on this kid. Puck handling is definitely his strong suit. But can he take a hit? No clue. Give to Dan Char after him. For the love of God, no. But however, I would like to see a photo of those two standing next to each other. Hey, if you can't take a hit from Char, get out of the league. Well, we all know Trennan. Well, Char took a hit from Trennan. Yeah. <laughs> um, and now Yakov Trennan's currently riding the bench. Yeah, I don't understand that. He plays hard every game, doesn't get to play. You got guys like Cousins who are doing nothing and and, and giving no production. And Cousins is currently in the taxi squad, I think. Just a veteran. The only reason he's not playing is because they're playing. Hines is playing veteran over guys who want it. Could that be a money thing? Guys that are getting paid a boatload compared to the guys that are. Uh, comparatively speaking, not the cheap. Well, Trennan's cheap, so that's what I'm saying. They're paying. They're playing the expensive guys. Because why would you pay a bunch of money to a guy if he's just going to sit on the bench? That would be like paying me three million bucks a year to sit on the bench. <laughs> yeah, we'll see how that goes for everything, but. That was our show tonight. Gave y'all got gave you guys a bunch of info. Hope you guys like our show. Please don't forget to like our vi- like us on Facebook. Subscribe on YouTube. Check out our our uh, sponsor on Facebook and um, also go to their website. And we'll be back at it tomorrow for Florida Everblades and South Carolina Stingrays. Round nine hundred. <laughs> Wait, are they playing the Stingrays or are they playing um? Uh, the solar bears. I'm confused, man. They play the same team so damn much. Uh, South Carolina. They get they play them back to back. Okay, okay, I was right. Woo, I was right the first time. 
Next week we play Orlando a three and three. Oh, okay. Well, anyways, yeah, we'll be back at it tomorrow. See you guys later.